then lads and lasses welcome back to the channel Sandro Tonali has been on many Newcastle United fans tongues as he is the reason why this midfield is not succeeding is he the problem is he not the problem where's the solution I've got my opinion I've got a very very clear opinion me I just I, I'm all for one of these reasons which you will find out in the video but I want to find out what you think as well because many people say the one Sean Longstaff in over Sandro Tonali and he's the reason why it's unbalanced with two attacking. Bruno's the only DM left back and they've got six attackers, uh, six, three midfielders, three attackers all coming on to Bruno while Joel Linton and Sandro Tonali are up the field. Let's get this straight off the bat. And I don't know why people aren't explaining this. Sandro Tonali has been the most standout player in our team. Do you know what? On par with Gordon. Them two have been our best players across this course of the Premier League season. The Champions League, we'll get on that in a second. But they, them two have just been creating every single chance. They've showed the most intensity, the most passion in this team. Sandro Tonali just hasn't stopped working his socks off. He has been, bar none, the best midfielder in our team so far. He's been better than Bruno, better than Joel Linton. Better on Sean Longstaff. I know Sean Longstaff's had a tiny bits of cameo in this Premier League season, so we can't really include him, can we? But he's been much better than Bruno and Joel Linton, and wrongfully subbed off at times when other midfielders should have. We're going to get into why Sandro Tonali is not the problem, why he's Newcastle United's best midfielder, in my opinion. But before we do that, you let me know in the comments who would you rather play as a our best three midfield. Would you rather have Bruno, Joel and Sandro Tonali? Would you rather have Sean Longstaff, Joe Willock when he comes back in? You let me know down below. And if you haven't already, smash the like button and hit the subscribe button. Let's get straight into today's video. Now, before we get into his performances in the Premier League and the Champions League, of course, let's take a look at why Sandro Tonali would be justified if he didn't have great performances as soon as coming to Newcastle United. Sandro Tonali was bought as the most expensive Italian ever in history, right? No Italian has ever set the Premier League alight. Uh, Gianfranco Sola, of course, it was in the Premier League back then. He was probably past it, but he, he was a great player. His career was fantastic. But at Chelsea, it wasn't his most standout team he played for. Jorginho, probably the next on the list. I mean, there's no standout Italians whatsoever. He's come to a league where most Italians have never done it before, where Italians are very inexperienced. I mean, there's ones like Zappa Costa and stuff. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? What? So for Sandro Tonali to adapt to this Premier League and not give shocking performances on his debut against Aston Villa, dropped a man of the match debut, right? A man of the match performance, sorry, should I say, scored on his debut, absolutely bossed the midfield on his first game in England, first game away from Italy, didn't play for AC Milan. He's had struggles, as he said, said settling into England and he's coming and he's absolutely bossed it on his first game and we tore apart Villa that day. Number two, Manchester City. The best team in the world. You can't really expect for less, uh, especially in their back garden, back garden. But he didn't even play bad. Like, yes, everyone was quiet. He didn't have the most fantastic game, but he wasn't exceptionally bad, was he? Neither was anybody else exceptionally good or even good at the least. Then the next game, Liverpool. He was wrongfully brought off, which is becoming a theme now, right? And it's he's... He is fit to play for this team. I hate people saying, oh, he's not up to date. He's played for this team many a times now. He can play 90 minutes, no bother. He played in such an intense AC Milan team, such a high-pressing AC Milan team. He is fit to play in this team. And I'm no Eddie Howe, right? But he is fit to play in this team. I can tell you that now. He was wrongfully brought off against Liverpool as he was yet again one of our most brightest sparks in the team. Again, with Anthony Gordon, the two most standout players. I, how is this man even getting blamed? But we'll carry on. Brighton, he had enough, uh, shocking performance overall. He was kind of at fault for the first goal, but so was many other people. Why on earth Nick Pope belted that goal out to, uh, the ball out to a stupid man straight into his path? He could have left it. Someone else could have come and claimed it. He he could have just booted it straight out for a throw in, but instead he, he tries to kick Nick Norman's. Like, I'm really, really cautious. He, he's a fantastic shot stopper, right? But I'm really cautious with Nick Pope being a sweeper keeper. I don't like it whatsoever. Uh, yet, yeah, Tenali probably should have cleared it better, but. It's, Many other people were at fault for that goal, but because he's a new lad and we don't want to slate the players who've been and had a fantastic season last season, he'll be the unfortunate scapegoat for that. Which he was yet again brought off in that game where Joel Linton was brought off in that game, but that was the worst midfield performance I'd ever seen from Joel Linton. Can't really blame him, although he didn't dream with the team for oh God knows how long it was, but yet again, terrible performance for Joel Linton. The broth got brung off at the same time. Uh, why? But on to the AC Milan game, probably his worst performance for Newcastle United over his very short career. And this isn't something that's going to go on mind. 
he's went in, he's back on him. Nevertheless, of the fantastic reception he got, and I'm very glad for that. Mind have, if he got booed, I would have been forming it. How, how on earth he's done great for that team and he'd be getting booed? I wouldn't have liked that whatsoever. He's had a fantastic reception, but he's going back to where he was an absolute fanatic fan of. And no matter how much of a professional you are, these things still come into consideration. He allegedly had a season ticket and has AC Milan tattoos absolutely all over him, and he adored that club so much. He grew up in the academy ranks. He loved them since a young boy. Yet again, these things do come into consideration. No matter if you're 50 years old and you've played football your whole life, these things will come into consideration. And that's not also stating that that performance was probably justified as he'd only trained once with Newcastle United since coming back from a muscle or thigh strain, I think there was, training with the Italian team. Um, yet again, it's all justified. Like This man is just outclassing everything that he's meant to be fallen back on. When we just look at some players in our team, how they've adapted to the Premier League, it took Joel Linton. But speaking about adaptation, like this lad has just come from Italy. Yet again, where he's been there his whole life. It took Joel Linton three odd years to adapt to the Premier League. Yes, he was played in an unfavourable position, which he should have never been played on. Oh my God, the mastermind in Steve Bruce. Jesus Christ, I'm glad them days are over. But yes, it took Joel Linton three years to adapt to the Premier League. It's took Tonali... A very, very short space of time. And I mean a very, very short space of time. It's it's just fantastic. Everything that he's meant to be falling back on, he's overcome yet again. Bruno and Jolin were fantastic last season and absolutely superb. Probably the best midfield duo we've seen for a very, very long time. And Tenali's outclassed them both this season. Playing on the right centre mid where he played in a double pivot for AC Milan on a right centre mid position, which he isn't used to. He's outclassed both of them in their preferred positions as well. But let's take a look at some Sandro Tonali stats from this season currently in the Premier League. Three balls recovered per game. 100% of aerial duels he's encountered is won. 31 passes per game and that's including lobs, long balls, absolutely everything with 84% success rate. 46.2 touches per game. He's just the most electrifying. If he gets on that ball, he's either winning it back from someone, creating attack and output, striving down the right-hand side. Doesn't matter where Miguel Almiron is, the right winger, he, he'll surpass him. And he'll, he'll be that right wing, that right centre mid, that right back. He's absolutely everywhere in this team. He's so intense and so high-pressing. The passion from this lad to play football is unbelievable. So what is the problem? Is it Tonali? Is it the fact that Sean Longstaff's not playing and he's the balance in that team? All I'm saying is, right, Sandro Tonali's been absolutely fantastic. Yes, he's not hit the ground like a house on fire, do you know what I mean? But he's overcome everything that he's been set back on. Everything that I've explained in this video, he's overcome. He's, he's done a fantastic job. He seriously has with everything... Put together, I think he's just been absolutely superb. He should not be this scapegoat that's getting pointed at just because he's a new signing and he's a new in this team and everyone's like, mm, what's the problem, yeah? Or it's Tonali. He doesn't regularly play for Newcastle United as he didn't last season, so he's obviously got to be the problem. Absolutely not. He's been the best player on par with Gordon. I don't think he should be blamed whatsoever. So what do you think the problem is? Do we need a midfield rotation or does somebody else need to stand up like Joel Linden or Bruno? Let me know in the comments. Like I said earlier in this video, if you did enjoy this video, hit the like and smash the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your day.